Hi guys, it's me again, Guilherme. UI design involves aligning and lining up control nodes precisely, matching margins and proportions. On top of the anchor and layout system, Godot's 2D workspace comes with a grid, guides and smart snapping tools to help you place and align your UI components faster. In this video you learn how to use the grid and the grid snapping options, guides which are virtual lines to help you align sprites together, as well as the smart snapping options. To use the snapping options we first have to activate snapping. To do so we have to click on this blue magnet on the toolbar or press S to toggle it on and off. By default, any 2D or control node will snap to the grid. To make it visible, we have to press G or go to View and click on Show Grid. Keep in mind that the snapping will also work even if the grid is hidden. The grid allows us to move our nodes on a grid-like environment. If you have already used tile maps in or outside of Godot, it's pretty similar. Although it may seem basic, most UI designers use grid snapping to place and move sprites around quickly and precisely. By default, Godot's grid is configured to be 10 pixels by 10 pixels. We can change that by clicking on these three dots next to our magnet and clicking on Configure Snap. This menu allows us to configure snapping for both the grid and the rotation steps. A lot of the sprites that you find online use powers of 2 as their sizes, so it's really common to use similar values for your grid. In general, you want to set it based on your game's sprite size. For instance, here we are using a grid of 64 pixels by 64 pixels. You should use this grid as a base unit to set the size and position of your UI elements in fixed steps. This is going to save you time. For instance, the four bars that we have on top of our UI, if you look at the bottom ones, you notice that they are offset exactly by half the length of the top ones. This was easily done using grid snap. Each time we are moving one of these bars on the x-axis, we are actually moving it one-fourth of its complete length. If we go back to the Configure Snap menu, you notice that we also have an offset setting. This setting will add an offset on the x and y if needed. The grid starts off at the origin of your game, meaning at the position 0 on x and 0 on y. In case you don't want it to start here, you can change this by using the offset. The grid will also work on 2D nodes, and it's usually a really good idea to always keep it on when placing and moving nodes as it's going to help us keep them aligned correctly. On top of the grid, Godot 3 also provides us with guides and smart snapping tools. Guides are infinite horizontal and vertical lines you can place anywhere and use as a visual reference or to snap nodes to. To see guides in the viewport, go to View, Show Guides, or press Y, on your keyboard to toggle them visible. Make sure that you also have rulers turned on as well as your drag guides from them. To toggle them on and off, press R or go to View and click on Show Rulers. To create a new guide, click and drag from the horizontal and vertical ruler. If you click and drag from the top left corner, you create a both horizontal and vertical guide at the same time. Notice that guides also use snapping options. They are going to align to your nodes bounding boxes, and also move on the grid if it's active. To move a guide, click and drag from the ruler starting on the purple line. And to delete a guide, just drag it back to the ruler. To snap to the guide, you need to turn on Snap to Guide on the Smart Snapping menu. This was used on our GUI scene. You can notice that the buttons at the bottom are offset from the grid on the y-axis. I used the guide as a margin where I wanted to align the top edges of my UI components. On the map scene on the other hand, I'm using snap to other nodes to keep the obstacles against one another. This was only possible because the obstacle scene has a sprite which is offset from its root. The reason behind using snap to others instead of using the grid is because the grid was too big for our small obstacles to be snapped to it correctly. We could have also decreased the size of the grid instead of using this smart snap setting, which brings us to the point set at the beginning 
of the video. The grid is one of the most powerful and versatile tools you have at your disposal. And another smart snapping setting that we have is the snap to parent. This setting is going to snap your node's origin to its parent bounding box. Now let's look at a last few basic yet essential snapping options. The pixel snap is used to force your nose to snap to the pixel grid. This is important for pixel art games because placing them between pixels is going to lead some visual artifacts. The relative snap is useful when we have a node that's offset from the main grid but we still want it to move on grid steps. For instance, our player here is not on the main grid. If I press G you can see that it's offset. But if I select it, because we have relative snap selected, it's still moving on a grid-like manner, but it has it, the origin of the grid set to be at its origin. And lastly, we have the rotation snap, which can be configured on the configure snap setting, and it's used to rotate our node in fixed increments. As you can see, the player is being rotated on 15 degrees increments. And to finish it all off, here are two tips to use when you are using smart snapping and snapping in general. The snap to node anchor is only going to work on control nodes because they are the only types of nodes that actually have an anchor. And because of the grid being really dense, sometimes when you're using grid snapping, it will generally take precedence over other snapping options. This is going to give you the feeling that the other snappings aren't really working but they actually are, but it's just because your grid is too dense. So it's usually a good idea to turn the grid off or the grid snapping off when you're trying to use other smart snapping options. Thank you so much for watching this video. As usual, you can find this project on the GitHub repository, which is going to be linked in the video description. So if you want to play around with it, feel free. If you have any feedback, it's really appreciated. And I'll see you in the next time.